Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Songwriters Across Texas podcast. I'm Carl Anderson, and today we have our very special guest, Shane Cooley. Texas sunrise I've seen you too many times And I don't know why I've been restless Running mad all through the night Just to greet you at first light That is, I love this new batch of songs that I've been hearing. That's, I'm really there. Uh, I love, you know, your last batch of songs too. But that there's really great growth. Where did where did that one come from, or is there a story behind that? Well, that song, um, that's off an album I put out a few years ago called King's Highway, and uh, I wrote it. Really, um, it's kind of a. I, it's hard to condense this story, but. When I first came to Austin, I got lost <laughs> trying to find my South by show. I met this guy while I was walking because I couldn't get a cab, and uh, he gave me these directions that were false, and I wound up walking up the ramp to 35, and the guy realized he had given me the wrong directions, and uh, borrowed his neighbor's minivan and came and found me, took, took me to my show, stayed in touch, and then years later invited me to come spend a month at his house in, off of King's Highway in South Austin. Right. And uh, I, so I wrote half of that album while I was like getting my first, I had only really visited Texas during South By. Mm -hmm. So that was my first time really like experiencing what what Austin was at that time. It really is a good example of Austin, you know, like the vibe here because, you know, I've, like I've lived in New York City, you know, and it's like, and I, I think New Yorkers are actually pretty sweet, but like, you know, like Different if someone vibe. gave you the wrong directions, they wouldn't go, oh, whoops, and go try to find you. You know, that's pretty wild. Yeah, no, and actually I had just been touring in the Northeast before then, so I was like, when this guy showed up, I was like, what's he doing? Like, <laughs> Right, right. You know, I still had my guard up, but like, especially, like, that was around 2010, 
and uh, just like the friendliness of Texans just right. really was cool to me. Like, it, I was not used to that. Were you suspicious of it? At first, a little yeah. bit, yeah. yeah. But I, at that point, I had no choice. <laughs> I was like, if this guy's going to murder me instead of take me to my show, I was like, I'm either going to make it to the show or not. <laughs> I think that batch of songs particularly were, they were love songs for Texas. You know, it was my first time really like, like just really experiencing the the people and the atmosphere and uh and falling in love with it that's awesome yeah and you uh and you've you've kind of gone away and come back right i mean that's the, you yeah keep... i'm here and there you know i'm traveling soul and I, yeah. my roots are in virginia so it's it's nice to go home sometimes and kind of kind of hide out and get cabin fever and record songs and yeah, totally. It's good to get. It's it's just good to have your spots, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, like personal space is a big thing for me. <laughs> like yeah, having, and if you're having cre- a little solitude is nice. So. Right, especially if you're a writer, and so you're, yeah. as you are. And uh, I was. Uh, I know you're uh, a William and Mary. Uh, yeah, I just actually uh, I took a stroll around the old campus the other night, not too long ago, and uh, snuck into a couple old buildings and <laughs> it's fun oh nice. but um i came across this one spot where i was i used to live in this dorm room and uh every time i would try to practice in my room or i'd go down into the study lounge and i'd play just as soft as i just played that last song just really tried to like not disturb anybody and always someone would stomp on this on this floor above me or like bang on the wall and so this one night i <laughs> I just was sitting outside on the steps just practicing and out of nowhere this this guy appears with a djembe and starts playing along and uh we did a little stroll like a kind of like a a march (laughs) through campus in the middle of the night and we were just like these guys are all lame we need to go spread music to people (laughs) right (laughs) on right on it was a really william and mary it's the second oldest university in the nation and it's just got a lot of history and that's really why I wanted to uh, try to go there was just the atmosphere and the ambiance when I took a campus tour when I was in high school and it just you felt got, like it was an inspiring place for a creative person and it was so, very much so it's uh there's a romance to that campus sure for sure I get the east coast of like that whole vibe those old yeah the, the architecture and there's a smell yeah that comes oh there's with definitely it. yeah yeah definitely a smell. and it's inspiring it gives you ideas to write um you've been writing pretty much since you were like 10 right pretty much yeah. and uh and you don't just write songs you write poetry as well um who were uh, i know you you had a, lit- uh, a writing or a literature degree right i do i uh, yeah i graduated from william and mary with a ba in english and what were I can your barely fo- speak it, but <laughs> what were your focuses on like authors? Like, who are the authors that made you really want to be good? Well, it was funny. Um, I kind of didn't know what I was doing when I was uh, when I was there and chose that major, but I knew that I kind of was kind of at the crossroads of whether or not I wanted to pursue English or music as a major, and. Uh, I feel like even in high school, I didn't take band class. I like kind of made this conscious choice where I wanted to approach music and creating music with a more like freehand self-taught kind of way that without, without being as aware of the structure. So I kind of like always, I didn't pursue music in that way, but I thought about it and and I thought about majoring in business too, and maybe I should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> but I chose English because lyrics were always very important to me, and, um, and the most important to me. Yeah, I can tell. And I felt like that that was something that I wanted to focus on on the forefront. And I wound up, I, I took every music class that wasn't was an actual formal music training while I was there I practically minored in it too because I just took a lot of jazz history and history of western music and just learned a lot about 
music itself and its growth. Did some mm-hmm. of those, uh, like the jazz and the w- Western music, some of those, uh, or are there certain influences from that world that maybe people wouldn't expect? Oh, I, th- I think so. I th- uh, actually, even now, I'll when I wake up, I'll put on the classical station or a jazz station and just it's such a great thing for the brain. I mean, classical music is known to create endorphins. And yeah. It helps, man. It's just like the, I, takes away the noise in your head for a second. I but, agree uh, wholeheartedly. I, I'm a I'm a fan of the classical. I, I started in college and most of my, you know, in college it was rock and roll, you know, like basically. And oh, yeah. A lot of, and I was a rock and roll dude. So trust me, people are like, what do you, you listen to that too? And I'm like, yeah. That's powerful, <laughs> you know. I mean, these yeah, Bach pieces the original and stuff. And you're like, yeah, it was the original yeah. rock and roll. Paganini, you know, Paganini was. Oh yeah, it's just mercilessly, like on just this different level. And uh, I was having the conversation with a friend about this recently, where I've always like, I think because I didn't pursue the formal training of it, I always have been kind of intimidated by that kind of music or felt like it was something that I couldn't reach or wasn't had a, there was like this barrier. But I'm starting, I've been reading this uh, new autobiographical uh, book by Paul McCartney, The Lyrics. And um, he talks a lot about his inspirations from that and just like, you know, breaking that barrier and seeing music in a different way and like not necessarily always writing the song with verse, chorus, verse, chorus, but like with movements. And, there's there's some things on the on the upcoming album that that start to venture there a little bit, so I'm kind of excited to see where that goes. I'm it, well, I'm glad. I was thinking about Paul McCartney like four times since we've started this show. When you were singing, it, it, there was a very nuanced thing, and this is a, one of my favorite all time. So this is a great oh, compliment. Yeah. But also, uh, the he wrote a uh, he wrote a symphony. Right. Right. Yeah. He he went there. And, it, yeah. you know, I've always I guess I mean, I, I Beatles were I, one of the first things I ever experienced musically, you know, yeah. with, with like most people. But like always good to revisit them because you, you can always learn something new from another listen to what they did. And uh, but also reading this book by Paul, I had didn't realize how much I actually do identify with him because same thing he was his fascinations were were English and and, and Mm -hmm. literature and yeah like he was very well read and 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 you know his his wells of inspiration you know and his imagination is just very like inspiring for sure and he never runs out no no that's never that's what's amazing about it to me it's like wow that guy is still inspired but also, like, they ha- he, he still has moments where he thinks he would run out. Oh, like, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, that w- that's the most fascinating thing to read about is that he's, he still has those, like, anxieties that, right. you know, that I have or lots of songwriters that don't have, ever but go he's away. Paul McCartney. It's right. Like, <laughs> but like Lawrence Olivier used to say that he'd throw up before he'd go on stage, you know, and you're like, but you're Lawrence Olivier. It's the same thing. But isn't it, does that give you as a, you know, as an, as an artist that, that is, you know, I know you well enough to know that I don't see anything stopping you from doing this. There's, yeah, you know, it's a little too late now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but that it gives you at least some comfort to go when you have moments that are maybe you're not not so sure. Of Absolutely, yourself. yeah. It, it happens to the best of us. So, and it's, I, I, it used to really kind of irk me whenever I'd have a writer's block, but now I, now I'm like, all right, I've been through this before, like. Just ride it out. Yeah. This is time to feed your head, you know, and right, and get the well full, you know. All right, hey, you want to do uh, a second song for us? Sounds good to me. So this song's called Coyote, and uh, it's good. off a new album that I'm going to be putting out soon, uh, that I produced and recorded myself and played all the instruments on. I'm very excited about it. Very excellent. Kept a dirty, dirty secret In my blue jean pocket I had another one I hid up my sleeve 
and I believed that I could keep it. But karma comes around to every rascal, every low down, no good fool. And if you think you can keep your secret, well, it's as easy as keeping your cool. A coyote in grown man's clothing, forever lonely, forever free. Down in the valley, out on the streets, if you push me, I'll show my teeth. I was living with caveman junkies, riff raff, and kings of funky breaks. There was so much that I was learning, like how to make my own mistakes. A coyote in grown man's clothing Forever lonely, forever free, down in the valley, out on the streets. If you push me, I'll show my teeth. No, that's a new one. That is definitely a new one. That's, yeah, I mean, I love the recording, too, that, you know, and I know that there's a video uh, that's going to get made as well for, for that. Sure it's is. very excited. I'm, I think it, it's a good song to make a video on. It's very ev evocative. It, a lot of imagery in there. Well, that's kind of, that's one of those songs that came after that, that time of, like, of fermenting where I couldn't write for a long time or everything I tried to write I didn't feel good about. And then about uh, early 2021, I just sat down, had my little keyboard, played this beat, wrote that song instantaneously, had my phone recording, which is kind of part of my process, but just poured out. And then song after song came after that. So this whole album is just kind of like this outburst of songs that I feel really good about that, you know, uh, that are fresh. Right. So the so that Coyote Unleashed 
uh, like a whole album. Yeah, it was it was like all right, I have this song and I just got to keep going. I think I wrote three more songs that day and just that's so cool. And yeah, just you know, for everybody, the past few years have been pretty intense times, and I'm no different. And so like, I had a lot to kind of bring to the surface, and and uh, it were sort of some of the best songs are like that. They come out all at once, and you don't exactly. They're almost kind of intimidating to to face the the meaning of them because they can sometimes be prophetic in a way, foretell things, and uh, that st- certainly was one of those. So. I understand. Past, present, and future. <laughs> do, do these songs, I mean, are they, uh, does the coyote sort of inform the whole thing, and is it is he a through-line character? Is it like that? Sort of. It's not quite a, it's not like a concept, concept album, yeah, right. but um, I'm thinking about titling the album Forest, which is my middle name. Yeah. It was spelled with one R too, which is because my parents always loved, you know, being in nature. And uh, so, uh, so there's, there's some, there's some animal noises throughout the album and some different sort of organic elements. But, uh, but I think, I think the coyote himself is just, one of my many sides, perhaps, but uh, the coy- yeah, the coyote released you though. Uh, so af- after the fermenting stage, it was yeah. like here here I am now. Here's the rest of it. Yeah, a side of myself maybe I needed to be back in touch with right. a little bit. Yeah, I understand that. That are you into the whole Jungian? You know, do you study Jungian? Uh, you know the the archetypes and the shadow self and having to know that part a little of you. bit. Yeah, it was, you know. It was, good to have a little bit of knowledge in that but joseph campbell uh, also is you know the hero's journey and all that you t- you studying the uh, arthurian thing he he focused a lot on that i mean it's the arthurian myth is in all of our psyches yeah like you said those are the original archetypes you know every man you know i've always you know every man started out as a morality play i think in the renaissance and like but you can apply, so every man is a representative character of humanity. Mm-hmm. Of, and, and you can apply that sort of archetype to so, you know, everything, but every, every novel, film. Right, you know. right, yeah, exactly. It, it, it connects, and in, in like, you could have a dream, or I've, I've had a dream that was like literally pieces of the, the, the Arthurian myth, like the per- Percival myth. <laughs> Oh yeah. Something happened, and I, and I wrote it down, and I looked at it, and I was like, "That's that," you know, like that's cool how dreams and stuff like that inform oh, yeah. you, and that those myths are in all of us. And man, I mean, the, the imaginations on those guys—you know—they were the first to create these things. But there was just like, yeah, I, I, I like going back to the OG, the kind of yeah. the, the root of things. Me too. Know? And we were talking about music history too, like taking courses in jazz and classical, yeah, yeah. and the evolution of that you know, really kind of, you know, or part of the jazz course was also like blues and, you know, just the, just where that all started and like what that evolved into. And, yeah. You know, it's, you know, that's kind of the beautiful thing about music is that it's infinite. And you never, you never know everything and right. you can always do something, take a different you know different approach to it definitely did you see the rick rubin mccartney one where they were breaking down the tracks did you see that i think it's on oh my gosh you're gonna love that because rick rubin's like a little kid or how do you know paul mccartney but rick rubin knows what he's doing in the studio and so he's he's in there with sir paul and he's he's doing the isolation thing and paul's like working on this piece of gum and sounds like he's all of a sudden he's in there you know like and i'm Mm. like I could watch this for 25 hours in a row, you know, like that. I would never get tired of watching those two guys breaking down the white album. Oh, and there yeah. was the one, there was a bass line that he pulled out. I can't remember which song off the white album now, but I was like, I never heard, I, I've listened to that song like probably 10,000 times. And I never heard that. You can always discover something. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the like little my nuggets. favorite part yeah. about it. Yeah. And that's what I like about recording my own music too. And like being able to like, a, really like arrange these songs the way I hear them in my head, but also like let them transform in that process. And, uh, it really, it's just, I, I love working in this, in the studio 
alone and just kind of just I don't even know what my hands are doing half the time and I don't even know what I'm doing half the time as far as that I'm still pretty novice to the process but uh but I've always had an ear for arranging and like knowing when certain things should come in or not be there and like little things that like you said you might not notice the first time but are the, like earworms as they're called you know mm-hmm. yeah I love that stuff nice well, I'm glad you talked about the studio and that you love being, because I was going to ask you about studio, like studio versus live. You know, what's the difference for you? What Do you like well, one more than I've the other? I've really missed live. I haven't been able to do that as much in the past few years. But, uh, and I, I, <clears throat> I love that human connection, but I love, I love the studio environment, especially the way I've been doing it now, where it's just, I roll out of bed and walk into the other room and there's no one around and I just get it the way I want it to sound. And, uh, and I like, it's still about capturing energy, just like a live performance is, but it's more controlled too. I mean, it's back to the Beatles, you know, it's just like they were the pioneers of that, you know? And, and uh, yeah, I, I love recording, but I also love to play live. That's good that you love them both. Right. You know, there's some people like, ah, I'm not that much in the studio or man, yeah, no, I have studio. Like Steely live Dan didn't play live for a long time. By the way, former uh, fellow Wayman Mary alumni, Steely Dan. That's right. Yeah, I used to, um, the custodian back in, on campus used to tell me stories when uh, back when I was having trouble finding a place to practice. He was saying, he said, don't worry about it, man. They did the same thing to Steely Dan and look where they are. <laughs> I would I bet, I bet that made you feel really good. Yeah, it sure did. Like, you know, one guy saved it. You know, you could have been like, man, the, these people are so uptight. I can't even, I got to go, <laughs> you know, I got to go somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, no, he told it like it was. It was cool. He's a cool guy. That would have inspired yeah. me. I would have been like, that's right. Me and Steely Dan are going to get this done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, do you have one more song for us? I sure do. Mm-hmm. All right. This is another one from that upcoming album. Get my doohickey on. Mm. And this song is called Flashbacks. Guess a new one? Mm-hmm. The desperate months turn to desperate years. Turn into regrets I thought I'd never come near Here I am Where I've been Comes back in flashbacks Here and then the shortcuts home So I roam into the night Under trees and moonlight Wishing I could save my own life mattress for a queen 
queen-sized frame And I can't go back now from whence I came In the year 2021 Hindsight is the new school fun In my dreams I'm still a bandit In a band on the run I get flashbacks When I'm feeling it I get flashbacks when I'm feeling it When I'm lucky Shane Cooley, everybody. That's who that is. That's Shane Cooley, people. Man, I'm so glad you came here to talk. To, to, I mean, I, we've interviewed you a lot, you know, for the show, and uh, it, it just gets better and better. Like, I get to know you more and more. I'm, well, I, I can't wait to hear this new record. Well, thanks, man. It's always a pleasure, for sure. And I really appreciate you guys big time. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, I love your shirt too, by the way. That's right. I'm wearing Rapping. My, that's my Shane Cooley shirt right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, well, thank you for joining us, everybody, today. Uh, wherever you're watching this, uh, please leave us a like and subscribe and let your friends know, share it with them. Uh, it's our pleasure to uh, present to you these great musicians. So, thank you. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.